Welcome to the WCF Developer Screencast Series. My name is Aaron Sconard and I work for Pluralsight, a training company that provides both instructor-led and online courses for Microsoft developers. Visit Pluralsight.com for more details. In this short screencast, I'm going to show you how to host WCF services in ASP.NET Web Applications in IIS. Here we are in Visual Studio 2008, and we're going to be working with this eval service library project that we built in one of the previous screencasts. This project contains a simple implementation of a student evaluation service. We configured this thing with a few endpoints in this app.config file that we've been loading up within the built-in test host application in Visual Studio. By simply pressing F5, Visual Studio launches this WCF service host application which loads our service and exposes those endpoints, then it launches this client that's able to communicate with our service through one of those various endpoints that it discovers. Okay, what we want to do in this particular screencast is configure this service to be hosted within an ASP.NET web application, and then we'll host it inside of IIS. So the first step here is to add a new website to our solution. We're going to make this a WCF service template, and then we'll uh, give, it, give the directory a name of eval service site and hit OK. Now, in this particular project template, it gives us a sample implementation of a WCF service, kind of like before with the service library. We're going to delete these files because we already have an implementation of the service of interest here. It's our eval service that was implemented down here below. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a reference to our website. And I'll add a reference to our eval service library project. Now we have that eval service library.dll in our bin directory. Okay, then the only other thing I need to do to host my service inside of this ASP.NET web application is I need to configure an SVC file that maps to that service. Okay, I'm going to rename this SVC file that it gave me by default to eval.svc. Then I'll open it up so you can see it. It has a, a language attribute, debug, and then we have this service attribute. This is where I need to specify eval service library .eval service. Now we don't need the code behind attribute because there is no code behind this service in the ASP.NET web application. The code is actually down here within the DLL that we added as a reference to the website. Okay, so by simply having that in there, we've now told ASP.NET how to map requests for this eval.svc file to the eval service implementation found in that eval service library assembly. Okay, now what we need to do is configure our website with some endpoints for our service. So I'll right click on the web.config file this time and select edit WCF configuration. Now for my service here, I need to change the name of the service to eval service, which is found here in our eval service library. So I'll select that guy. Then I need to go into my endpoints and reconfigure this endpoint to use our ieval service library, sorry, our ieval service service contract, which is that guy right there. Okay, and then if I wanted to, I could add more endpoints into the system. Let's just add another service endpoint here, and we'll give it a relative address of basic. We'll use the basic HTTP binding, and then choose that same IEVAL service contract. Okay, so now we have a couple of HTTP-based endpoints that we're exposing through this website. Okay, now it's important to note that when you're hosting WCF services within IIS 5 or 6, you can only use bindings that use the HTTP protocol. We can't use like the net TCP binding or the net name pipes binding in this particular case. If you happen to be hosting on IIS 7, then you have a, a key feature referred to as Windows Process Activation Service, or WAS for short, and that will allow you to use these other bindings. But if you're running on IIS 5 or 6, you have to use one of the built-in HTTP bindings uh, in order for these endpoints to function properly. Okay, so now I've configured a few endpoints. I will save this configuration file, exit out of this tool. Then we'll go into our web.config file to look at it. 
Now most of the stuff that's in this default web.config file I don't need, so I'm just going to delete all of it except for our WCF configuration section so you can see it. And you'll notice here we have the first endpoint that was given to us by the template, the one that uses the WSHTP binding, and we have our basic endpoint that we just added, and then of course we still have our MEX endpoint for retrieving metadata from the service. Now these two guys use IEVAL service as the service contract, uh, and the other one uses IMetadata exchange. Okay, so we have those three endpoints that are going to be exposed. Now let's save this thing, and let's go ahead and test it out. Let's right-click on eval.svc and select View in Browser. Notice it just launched the ASP.NET development server at this particular address, and then it browsed to eval.svc, and you're looking at this documentation page that's provided by WCF, the actual metadata exchange service, well, the built-in uh, metadata behavior that's part of WCF on the fly. And you can browse to the WSDL definition and see how to actually start writing the code to consume this service on the client side. Okay, so we can see that our service is indeed up and running. But now how can we actually test it to invoke some of its operations like before? Well, one way to do that is to just launch that WCF test client application from the command line. So I'm just going to type in WCF test client and then paste in the address to our service inside of this ASP.NET web application. So we'll launch that. It's going to talk to our service and retrieve its metadata and then give us the same UI as before to communicate with our service. Let's just type in some data, invoke it a few times through this endpoint. First one took a little while, we'll invoke it three times. Then I'll come down here to this other endpoint that uses the basic HTTP binding and invoke git evals and notice we get three evals back. So our service is indeed working hosted inside of the ASP.NET development server within that ASP.NET web application. Now the next step is to actually host this thing inside of IIS and that's actually pretty straightforward from this point. All I need to do is come in here and launch the IIS management tool. We'll bring this guy up and then what I'm going to do is come in here to my website, my default website, and I'm going to create a new application. And I'm going to call it Eval Service Site. Then I'm going to map it to a physical path of C Demos Eval Service Site, that directory that we just created for our ASP.NET web application. Then I'll hit OK. And then let's actually look at the content view for this site. And notice we're looking at eval.svc. There's our web.config file that we just configured. And inside of bin, we have our eval service library. So everything's in its, in its proper place. Now I should be able to just right click and say browse. And now notice I'm hosting inside of IIS itself. We're looking at localhost WAC eval service site. Notice there's no port number. That's the sign to show that this is indeed being hosted on port 80 within IIS on this machine. So now if I wanted to test this thing in my WCF test client, I could just type in WCF test client again and paste in the address to the IIS location without the port number, launch it again. It'll download the metadata, give us a UI, and then we can go ahead and test this thing once again through the tool by invoking a few of its operations. We'll invoke that guy three times, then run git evals, and notice length is three again. So there you have a complete example of hosting our simple eval service library within an ASP.NET web application, which we then hosted inside of IIS. Thank you for watching this video in the WCF Developer Screencast series. You can find more in-depth online training videos at Pluralsight.com. Pluralsight offers an extensive library of online training courses covering a variety of current and emerging Microsoft technologies, and you can access this valuable content from anywhere, anytime, within just a few clicks, while still learning from industry experts you trust. Check it out today at Pluralsight.com.